Right, well, creating a blueprint for leadership. It's no easy task, but it is what Oprah's longtime partner, Stedman Graham, is accomplishing with a new book called Identity Leadership. To lead others, you must first lead yourself. And the author joins us live right now. Stedman, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, my pleasure. Glad to be here. I wanted to ask you first, though, off of the book. It's, it's a debate that we have on this show quite a bit. I'm curious to get your thoughts. In your opinion, are leaders born or created? Well, I think they have to be created. I think that's not set up for you actually to be a leader. Uh, to be a leader, you have to create self-mastery. You have to focus on your own uh, purpose in life. You have to develop a vision for yourself. You know, nobody teaches that in school. In school, they teach you how to memorize, take tests, repeat the information back, get labeled with a grade. Two weeks later, you forget the information. Mm -hmm. And most people, it's almost impossible for them to create self-mastery because they, they wake up in the morning, they wash their face, they brush their teeth, they get something to eat, they get the kids out to school, they work all day, come home in the afternoon, they spend time with their family, they watch TV, <laughs> they go to bed, maybe they dream. Yeah. So they're not going anywhere. So that represents about 99.99% .99 of the people in the world who are pretty much working and not thinking, not developing, not building. And certainly they don't know how to take information, education, and make it relevant to who they are, to their identity, because they have no identity. They're just pretty much doing what everybody tells them to do, and they pretty much mimic everything. Mm -hmm. So they're basically followers. And very few people are able to take control of their own destiny, which is why you have a big gap between the have and the have nots. Got it. So Stedman, for your book, Identity Leadership, tell me what the nine steps are to achieving it and making a difference. Well, the nine steps is a success process I created my, for myself to define myself. You know, oftentimes I, during my lifetime, I was defined by race and told you couldn't make it because of the color of your skin. Uh, and it took me 31 years of traveling around the world realizing, you know, that I got that message. I believe that message. It was the wrong message. You, mm -hmm. you, you don't, you know, you're not defined by your race. You're, you're, you're defined because you don't know who you are. When you don't know who you are, you let other people define you. So, you know, you grow up in a situation where you're defined by race, you're defined by your gender. Women are told they can't make it because it's a man's world. You're defined by your entitlements. You're defined by your house, your car. Certainly, I'm defined by my relationship as you introduced me as Oprah's, you know, life partner. Mm -hmm. And so what I try to do is I try to realize it's not how the world define you, defines you, it's how you define yourself. Well, th th there's a process for that. You just can't do that. It just doesn't happen because nobody really teaches you how to do that. So the nine-step success process, is the, the first step is based on identity. You know, it's based on your talents, it's based on your skills, it's based on your uh, abilities, it's based on what you love. And then the second step is create your vision, just being able to organize what you love, what your passion is, what your talents is. The third step is you have to have a plan for that. You have to be able to execute that. And the fourth step is master the rules of the road, your guiding principles. Fifth step is step into the outer limits, overcoming your fears. There's only two emotions, there's love and there's fear. Sixth step is power the seasons of change. It's not so much what happens to you, but how you respond to it. Seventh step is build your dream team. No one makes a loan, no man or woman is an island to themselves. Eighth step is win by decision. It took me a long time to realize it's about the information. <laughs> yeah, and there's a and long taking list that of all these steps and here. And we got all, to who I was. Yeah, we got all these steps Absolutely. highlighted right it's next called, to you. It's, it's, called self, it's, called, it's called self actualization. Yeah, it's and not what an we're easy trying process. To do is, what I'm trying to do is turn, turn Maslow's you know, hierarchy of needs around, turn the triangle upside down, where you put self actualization at the very beginning. And then you utilize education and information to be able to create your own life, make your own decisions, think for yourself, and then be able to apply that to the 21st century, which is what 21st century is calling for. They're calling for self-directed learners, lifelong learners, and people who can take control of their own destiny. Yeah, Stedman, when we talk about that, though, I mean, that's, that's really what, uh, what we're talking about when we talk leadership and politics, right? It's being a leader and really focusing on that aspect right there. And we know... Uh, obviously, you and Oprah are very, uh, you know, attached to politics right now. When you look at it, though, there have been a lot of talk about what you guys might be leaning towards when we talk about endorsements in 2020. Um, obviously, there's been talk about Oprah Winfrey attached to Pete Buttigieg. So, I mean, do you guys align yourselves on that? And who are you looking for in 2020 to step up and be those leaders? Well, you look for your, you look towards yourself as a way to do what you do well and be the best person you can, you can, you can possibly be. You, you don't want to turn your power over to somebody else to determine your own destiny. You know, you look at yourself and say, what can I do to be a better person? How can I create more opportunities for the people that I serve? Mm -hmm. You know, how do I stay in my lane? How do I become authentic in doing what I'm exactly supposed to do so I can make the biggest impact? 
And so this is why when I, when I talk about identity leadership, identity leadership is self-leadership. Yeah. It's based on the philosophy that you can't lead anybody else until you first lead yourself. So it's servant leadership. In order for you to be able to enhance other people's lives, you first have to enhance your own life. Well, Stedman, what are the chances that Oprah will run for president in 2020? And just say she'll do it herself. Well, she's not focused on that. She's really focused on who she is and what she can do. She has enough on her plate. She's got the, you know, the, the Leadership Academy in South Africa. She's got um, you know, her own network. She's got now, she's got Weight Watchers. Uh, she's got a magazine. She's got, you know, she's busy with other projects. She just did the deal with Apple. Uh -huh. So, you know, it, I think that's enough. And so to be able <laughs> to figure out how you can empower, you know, other women, which is what her focus is, other women to be the best that they can possibly be. Yep. You know, that's a, that, it takes a lifetime to be able to do that. Yeah, just a little bit more than I'm up to right now anyways for myself. All right, Stedman Graham, thank you so much for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.